This is my slightly adapted take on Terence McKenna's rant with the shaman from almost 20 years ago to the day around re-evolution and eschatology. It's still valid today. If the truth can be told so as to be understood, it will be believed. Human history represents such a radical break with the natural systems of biological organisation that preceded it, that it must be the response to some kind of attractor or dwell point that lies ahead in the temporal dimensions. Persistently, Western religions have integrated into their theologies the notion of a kind of end of the world. And a lot of recent experimentation kind of confirms this intuition. It isn't going to happen according to any of the scenarios of orthodox religion. But the basic intuition that the universe seeks closure in some kind of omega point of transcendence is confirmed. It's almost as if this idea or object in our collective future is throwing off reflections of itself, ricocheting back into the past, illuminating this mystic, inspiring that particular saint or visionary or architect. And out of these fragmentary glimpses of eternity, we can build a map of not only the past, but also the current and the evolutionary aggression into novelty and a map of the future. And that this map building is really what shamanism, both culturally and contemporary, has always been about. A shaman is someone who has been to the end, who knows how the world really works. And knowing how the world really works means to have risen about outside, above and beyond the dimensions of ordinary space, time and casuistry. And actually seen the wiring under the board stepped outside the confines of learned culture and learned and embedded language into the domain of what Wittgenstein called the unspeakable, the transcendental presence of divinity, of the other, which can be sanctioned in various ways to yield systems of knowledge, which can then be brought back into ordinary social space for the good of the community. So in the context of 90% of human culture, the shaman has been the agent of evolution because the shaman learns the techniques to go between ordinary reality and the domain of the ideas. And this higher dimensional continuum that is somehow parallel to us, available to us, and yet occluded by cultural convention, born out of fear of mystery. Shaman are people who have been able to decondition themselves from the community's instinctual distrust of mystery and to go into this bewilderingly higher dimension and gain knowledge, recover the jewel lost at the beginning of time, save souls, heal, commune with the ancestors and so forth and so on. Shamanism is not a religion, it's a set of techniques. And one of the main principal techniques is the use of naturally growing organic psychotropic plants which dissolve boundaries. And in the presence of dissolved boundaries, one cannot continue to close one's eyes to the ruination of the earth, the poisoning of the seas, and the consequences of 2,000 years of unchallenged dominator culture based on monotheism, hatred of nature, suppression of the female, etc. So what shamans have to do is act as exemplars by making this journey, this journey into the domain of the Gaian ideas and bringing them back in some form of art or pattern in the struggle to save and heal the world. The planet has a kind of intelligence, but it can actually open a channel of communication with individual human beings. And the message that nature and the planet is sending us is, Transform your language for a synergy between electronic culture and the boundaries between this electronic culture and the imagination. A synergy between dance and idea, between understanding and intuition. And dissolve the boundaries that your culture has sanctioned between you. 
to become part of this Gaian supermind. I mean, it's fairly profound. It's fairly apocalyptic. History is ending. We are, we are the generations that will witness the revelation of the purpose of humanity. History is the kind of shockwave of eschatology. And what this means for those of us that pass through this transition into a multi-dimensional space is that we will be privileged to see the greatest release of compressed change probably since the origin of humanity. These decades that we're currently in are the shadow that announce the approaching cataracts of time over which our species and the correlated destiny of this planet is about to be swept. If the truth can be told so as to be understood, it will be believed. History has failed. For 10,000 years they promised us utopia and they've delivered a toxic, polluted and isolationist planet. Enough is enough. The emphasis of these current times in the novelty of electronic media and the repetitive trance music with its physiologically compatible rhythms is really the dis rediscovery of the art of natural magic with sound. But sound properly managed, properly understood, especially percussive sound, can actually change neurological states. And large groups of people getting together in the presence of this kind of sound are creating a telepathic community of bonding that's hopefully going to be strong enough to carry the vision out into the mainstream of society. The youth culture that's emerged in the last decade of the last millennium and the first couple of decades of the first next millennium is actually summing up much of civilization so far and pointing us into an entirely different direction. But the more we find ourselves entering what we call the third millennium, we find ourselves in the middle of an archaic revival, which means a revival of these rhythm signatures, a new approach to music, to dance, to art, a new social vision, a new approach to economics, a new relationship with nature, with feminism and with ego. All of these things are taking hold and not a moment too soon.